All right, welcome back to the channel. So, Errol Spence Jr., <laughs> I think Austin Trout, former 154-pound uh, champion, took a shot at Errol Spence Jr. in some comments that he made about people in boxing being on performance-enhancing drugs. So we're going to talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So Austin, no doubt Trout, shout out to Austin, no doubt Trout. I think that he is a, he is a gentleman, an athlete and a scholar. I really appreciate what he's doing with the WBO and his lawsuit with the WBO that he just won an appeal on. Uh, you can check out the video, it's on the channel where I go through it at a, at a very, very high level. Um, what ha was happening with him in the WBO where he is trying, he, Austin Trout, is actively doing something to try to limit the amount of corruption going on in boxing. So my hats go off. To, my hat goes off to him. He also, in an interview with Blue Blood Sports TV on Blue Blood, Blue Blood Sports TV's live stream, he was talking about steroids in boxing. The conversation went towards uh, steroids in boxing, and he made a statement about that a lot of your favorite fighters are on performance-enhancing drugs, getting passes, you know, uh, it's getting swept under the rug, right? Talking about the corruption in boxing around uh, performance enhancing drugs that we all know is prevalent, that we all know is there. So there's nothing that um, that uh, Austin Trout said about the state of steroid abuse in boxing and cheating in boxing that, you know, that, that everybody doesn't know is true. He did say something, however, though, about Errol Spence Jr. Well, not, I, he didn't say that he was speaking about Errol Spence Jr. Let me be very, very clear. He did not say the name, but he did mention puffy nipples, okay? Oh, dog. He did talk about puffy nipples. And if there's anybody in boxing that puffy nipples conversations and steroids is synonymous with, it's Errol Spence Jr. Because that's what you hear people talking about all that, you know, have been accusing him of since before the Kell Brook fight, right? Now, I think it's important to mention this because every time that I hear that 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 Errol Spence Jr. is on steroids, I I I always point people back to the to the same picture that you know is that from when Errol Spence Jr. is 15 years old and Errol Spence Jr. has nipples. I, I can't believe y'all got me <laughs> crazy. Um, uh, Errol Spence Jr.'s chest looks the exact same at 30 years old that it looked 15 years ago when he was 15 years old and just beginning boxing. And we'll put the picture up. I uh, either have the picture, you know, in the in the uh, thumbnail or I'll put it up, you know, in the middle of the video, like right around here if I feel like editing it so that you can see it. But you can look at the at the picture with Errol Spence Jr. With it, where he's obviously a young kid. He's got those, um, he's got the, uh, he's got the corn rolls, corn rolls, and the picture is when he's 15 years old. You see his chest looking the same way that it looks right now. So specifically with Errol Spence Jr., the fact that his uh, chest looks like that, uh, it, it's probably something, in a, a hormone imbalance that took place, you know, when he was a kid. And he just never had the surgery, never went in there to correct it because that is something that you could correct with surgery. And also, my understanding it is it, of it is that people that get those puffy nipples as a result of using performance-enhancing drugs have the surgery to get rid of it so it does not show. Errol Smith Jr. just hasn't had the surgery and just hasn't decided that he's going to get rid of that. However, the idea that he is on steroids because of those, the way that his chest looks, that I that I just I brush off just. Just brush that to the side because you would have to be telling me that the guy was taking performance enhancing drugs when he was 15 years old. Okay. And, and not only when he's 15 years old, that he had to have been a steroid abuser before the age of 15, because it would have taken a bit of time for those, for that to have developed on his chest. If it was through the use of performance enhancing drugs. So unless Errol Spence Jr. was on performance enhancing drugs when he was 13 years old, playing uh playing junior high school football you know before he ever picked up a pair of boxing gloves yeah you can pretty much brush aside the whole puffy nipple thing however 
In sake, uh, to in in order to be fair though, because every you got to know, I'm a big Errol Spence Jr. fan. I'm a, I'm a supporter of Errol Spence, uh, Spence Jr. And just like I'm a support, I'm a fan of Deontay Wilder. I'm a supporter of Deontay Wilder. But I am also somebody that knows that cheating is rampant through the sport of boxing. So I'm not. If somebody were to say Errol Spence Jr. is on steroids, I wouldn't say, "Oh, I know 100 that he's not." Because I don't. I'm not testing him. You know, I'm not Vada. I'm not following him around. And, you know, I've met the guy two times in my life. I can't tell you for sure whether he is or whether he's not. But what I can tell you is that his particular the way his chest looks is not evidence, is not evidence of it. Because, again, of how long his chest has been like that and the age at which it was already that we can establish through pictures that it was already like that. But... I, but see, this is my thing with performance enhancing drugs. If, for example, there are all kinds of people in boxing that I have suspicions about, right? A bunch of people that I have suspicions about. I got suspicions, and I'll I'll keep it out of uh, out of modern boxers, right? The, I mean, currently active boxers. I had suspicions about Vladimir Klitschko. I had suspicions about Vitaly Klitschko. I got I had suspicions suspicions about um God. I guess Manny Pacquiao's still an active fighter. But I had suspicions about Manny Pacquiao. I got suspicions about all of those Eastern Europe, uh, all of the Eastern Europeans, right? Um, suspicions. But the thing about suspicions are that until somebody gets caught, you just don't know. That's all you're doing is it's all you're doing is suspecting, and because sus- all you are is suspicious, and because there's so many people that could be doing it, um, dude, you can be suspicious about everybody. My when. When I get feel it's time to get heavy handed about corruption is not when you suspect it or when you believe it's the case. It's when they actually test positive. So when guys te- like Canelo Alvarez pop dirty, Tyson Fury pops dirty, um, Louis Neary pops dirty, France Cruz Cruz the Zone pops dirty, Billy Joe Sa- Billy Joe Saunders pops dirty, Dillian White pops dirty, uh, Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Uh, Jarrell Big Baby Miller pops dirty. Alexander Boost Putin pops dirty, right? When you pop dirty, that's the point in time where the hands need to get heavy, where you start, where you say, okay, look, we don't know about all these other people, but we do know about you. And as a result, we're going to make an example out of you so that we can scare off many of the other people who are, who are test, who are not testing positive, but yet, are uh are taking advantage of performance enhancing drugs to improve their performance that's what i would say right so again with with um when people say yo when i when i point out oh eric um tyson fury cheated in deontay wilder one and two now did he cheat in one or two dude that is just garrett everybody knows that at this point in time it's just it's just whether or not you think that it's a big enough a deal to say something about or whether or not it was severe enough to where it could have changed the outcome of a fight or whatever. But other than that, every, you know, everybody, everybody knows that. So when people said, well, what about Deontay Wilder? When Deontay Wilder hit somebody behind the ear and all that. Well, hey, if Deontay Wilder is running around punching people in the back of the head, the next time he punches somebody in the back of the head, make a big hoopty do about it and call the WBC and try to get the WBC to do something about Deontay Wilder hitting people in the back of the head. You know, one person cheating in the one person cheating is no different than another pe- person cheating just because you like them. If it was if it turned out to be the case, like for example, I was a huge Canelo Alvarez fan, still love watching Canelo Alvarez fight. But when Canelo Alvarez popped dirty for Computerall, it is what it is. The dude popped dirty for Computerall. I gotta say what it is. Gotta say what it is. And then when it is what it is, you call for the proper punishment so that this type of stuff doesn't happen anymore, man. Because people in boxing should be able to enter into the sport of boxing. You, everybody should be on an even playing field uh, as far as what they're able to, how they're able to train and the things that they put in their body. Now, you're not going to always be on an even playing p- field with somebody in boxing because you can get in there with somebody that's just a better ac- athlete, right? So where one guy, um, you know, is just, you know, he's just an average athlete with really good skills. The other guy is a tremendous athlete with really good skills or good skills is probably going to beat the guy that's not as athletic. So, you know, there's no guarantee for an even playing field, but there is, you should be able to work towards there not just being blatant cheating. 
right? And in this particular scenario with Aerosmith Jr., if it was a situation where I really felt like, nah, this, I think this dude is juicing um, because of his chest, I would say something. I'd be like, yeah, that's real, 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 real suspect. Real suspect. I like Luis Ortiz. Love Luis Ortiz as a fighter. I think Luis Ortiz is juicing. And he probably got, a, <laughs> I think he was juicing because he got caught. Let's start doing something about the people that get caught and not necessarily get hung up on the people that you might suspect that have not gotten caught. Now, again, I want to be very clear that Austin Trout did not say Errol Spence Jr.'s name specifically, and it could be that I misinterpreted who he was referring to, but seeing as I pay pretty close attention to the sport of boxing, um, the only guy that I know that has these puffy nipples things going on right now that people are talking about is Errol, is Errol Spence Jr. But no go on that for Errol Spence Jr. as the reason why you suspect that he's cheating because he was like that when he was 15 years old. But anyway, that's my take on the scenario. You let me know what you think. Um, if you would not mind, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you are subscribed or you're going to subscribe, make sure you hit the bell icon and then select all notifications so that you can be notified when we release more content. Also, special thank you to everybody uh, that supports through the Patreon and the channel members and everybody that comes by the live streams Monday through Friday. Uh, and Sunday mornings for OG Boxing Talk. Look forward to seeing you at the next live stream. You leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think. Peace.